Welcome to Boston University School of Medicine's 2021 commencement exercises. I'm Dr. Karen Antman, Dean of the Medical School and Provost of the Medical Campus. We gather today to publicly recognize the credentials that our candidates for the doctorates of philosophy and medicine have earned and to celebrate their major life transitions to becoming a physician or scientist. A virtual celebration wasn't exactly what we planned for you. Normally, the faculty gather to publicly recognize the credentials that our graduates have earned with traditional academic regalia, pomp and circumstance, and a good deal of cheering from your families and friends. It's one of the most joyous annual events of academic life. But today, we will still celebrate with your families and friends. We know our students' achievements were dependent on their significant support. We thank all of you who supported our graduates in many ways, especially their parents. Although graduation marks the end of their course of study, we call it commencement, literally a beginning. Churchill caught this meaning in his famous quote when America entered World War II. Now is not the end, it's not even the beginning of the end, but it is perhaps the end of the beginning. Commencement is really only the end of the beginning of your education as a physician or scientist. Today, your diploma is their credential that grants you entry to the next stage of your education, your residency or postdoctoral fellowship, and then lifelong learning. You are becoming physicians and biomedical scientists at perhaps the most medically challenging time in the last century. Not only have we lost patients, family, colleagues, and friends locally and globally, but COVID has highlighted the health disparities that we knew existed, but now are clear to everyone. We also can't look away from a series of needless deaths and tragedies this year, predominantly of black and brown Americans, but also LGBT Americans, Asian Americans, and you know that I could go on and on. So we're also fighting the pandemics of violence and racism. I was delighted to hear Senator Dick Durbin, chair of the uh, Senate Judiciary Committee at the hearings the day after the Boulder, Colorado event say, in addition to a moment of silence, I would like to ask for a moment of action. He continued, Prayer leaders have their important place in this, but what are we doing? Prayer is a good starting point, but that shouldn't be our end point. As students, you've been on the front lines of medicine and science throughout your years at BUSM, doing research, seeing patients, volunteering in our community. But now, as newly minted physicians and scientists, you'll literally be on the front lines of these pandemics. Albert Einstein famously said, in the midst of every crisis lies great opportunity. When Cambridge University was closed because of the plague, Isaac Newton, then a graduate student like you, developed calculus while studying at home and discovered gravity allegedly sitting under an apple tree. These pandemics will change the careers that you had planned. Many more of you will become experts in infectious disease, virology, immunology, vaccine development, social determinants of health, mental health, gun violence, and public health policy. You will be the members and the leaders of teams that resolve these problems. The faculty have great confidence in your creativity and innovation. You are smart, committed, resilient, and adaptive. We're confident that you will collectively and individually change the world. We're counting on it. Congratulations on all of your outstanding accomplishments, and don't forget to come back and visit. Dr. Deborah Stearns Kurosawa, Associate Provost and Dean of Graduate Medical Sciences, will now offer her congratulations. Dr. Kurosawa. Thank you, Dean Antman. So Dean Antman, colleagues and guests, it is an honor and a privilege to congratulate the MD, PhD, and PhD class of 2021. 
Each of you started your doctoral education journey about five years ago, when the 2016 Summer Olympics were held in Rio de Janeiro, with 11,000 athletes and 500,000 global visitors. The Broadway musical Hamilton was new and a national sensation. Brexit was approved in Britain, and Tom Brady was still in New England. The 2016 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine went to a basic scientist, Dr. Yoshinori Osumi, for his work on the cellular mechanisms of autophagy. And two previously unknown coronaviruses were but a vague memory, SARS in 2003 and MERS in 2012. And getting a new vaccine approved typically took five to 10 years. Life has changed dramatically since then. And your last year in your PhD or MD-PhD program has been challenging beyond description. On behalf of all the faculty and staff in GMS, I applaud you on your achievement. Getting a PhD degree is hard enough with all the stress and anxiety. Accomplishing that life milestone in the midst of a global pandemic with all the restrictions you faced is simply humbling. You are the face of resilience and perseverance. You have overcome much in the face of a rapidly shifting landscape, both in the classroom, in the clinic, and in the lab. As you take these experiences into your next professional journey, I think your generation of scientists will have a great deal to teach the world. You are now scientists. Your training was in the Socratic method to develop and apply critical and analytical thinking tools. Continue to probe assumptions, to question viewpoints and perspectives, to found rationales on evidence, to consider all consequences, especially unintended consequences, and to question the question. How many times have you gotten a completely unexpected data set that forces you to go back to the original question to revise it? This has been your training in the scientific method. Take this training with you regardless of your career path and apply this training with intellectual rigor, uncompromising ethics, and always in the pursuit of truth and social justice. In May of 2016, Dr. Tony Fauci gave the commencement address at Ohio State University. He said, and I quote, you must be prepared at any moment to enter uncharted territory, to expect the unexpected. Not every opportunity or challenge with which you will be presented or that will influence your careers and your lives will be as dramatic or draconian as a frightening infectious disease outbreak, unquote. Expect the unexpected indeed. Your class gives unexpected a whole new meaning. You will leave us now with great anticipation for your next steps, and we wish you every success on your journey. Please join me in thanking your family and friends for their support. Spouses, partners, roommates, children, parents, aunts, uncles, and grandparents. We also gratefully remember those we've lost to the pandemic and know that they are very proud of you this day. Congratulations to you, the class of 2021. Thank you, Dean Stearns Kurosawa. Our MD student speaker, Carlo Pasco, was elected to speak as a representative of his class by his classmates. Carlo will become a, a pediatric resident at the Los Angeles Children's Hospital in June. A San Diego native, he received his BA in human biology with a minor in poetry from Stanford University. Carlo also received an, a master's degree in narrative medicine from Columbia University and a master's in medical sciences from Boston University. During medical school, he studied the outcome of narrative medicine training on student communication, reflective writing, 
and empathy. Carlo was also the head writer for the first year skit night, co-created the narrative medicine workshop, and served on the fourth year electives committee. Carlo? Thank you, Dean Antman. Good afternoon, faculty, staff, families, loved ones, and you, the class of 2021. My name is Carlo Pasco, and I have the privilege of being one of your commencement speakers. Uh, before we get started, I just wanted to list a few words and phrases that I promise not to use over the course of this speech. Um, unprecedented, new normal, reckoning, not what we expected. And I say this not to downplay or gloss over the COVID-19 pandemic or the ongoing systemic violence against black and brown people. But these words in particular stick in the mouth like gum that's been worked so much that it's lost its flavor. So I hope that you will indulge and forgive me as I try out new words to reflect on the past four years. This actually isn't the first time that I've given a speech to the class of 2021. I was asked to speak at the Anatomy Memorial Service toward the end of our first year. And in that speech, I spoke about my experience of anatomy through the lens of my training in narrative medicine, how our donors' bodies told stories that we could infer but never really know. And since that speech just three short years ago, I'm positive that we as a class have gathered countless more stories to tell. Some happy, some sad, some momentous, some minute, but all stories that we deem worth telling. What's interesting to me, however, are those stories that we don't tell. Stories of failure, shame, embarrassment. The idea of a CV of failures has been around for a couple of years. Mine alone could use a, a semester's worth of free printing. I applied to med school multiple times, had below average step scores, couldn't quite get the hang of shelf exams. But I didn't want to hog all the fun, so I reached out to you, the class of 2021, and asked all of you about your failures. So on this day, the day that marks the culmination of four years of hard work, a celebration of our successes, and the initiation into physicianhood, a day that many of us have dreamed about since we were children. I wanted to share some of your failures with everyone, um, with your permission, of course. Nat Malky wrote about applying to a summer ethics fellowship and not receiving it. They continue to write about ethics to this day. An anonymous student described the fear and anxiety of failing multiple practice NBME exams leading up to step one and delaying the start of clerkships. They described the feelings of inferiority and inadequacy. But with the support of friends and family, they took the exam and passed with a score that they are proud of. They realized how much of their self-worth they placed in academic success and focused on other things like exercising, mental health, and spending time with family and friends, for which they were grateful. Another anonymous student wrote that they so badly wanted to match near home and put down some roots. And though they matched elsewhere, they drew strength from the quote, you will bloom where you are planted. They end with, I can't wait to flower. And I don't mention these failures to make the rest of you nervous about uh, us entering the workforce. Rest assured, I can say without hesitation that this group of physicians is composed of some of the most intelligent, compassionate, and just downright cool individuals that I've ever met. And I'd trust each and every one of them to, to treat my family. My goal instead was to demonstrate that people fail all the time and in every stage of life. The next year of our lives, especially, intern year, will be rife with failure. We may miss a lab value, 
hesitate during a procedure, forget an obscure factoid that we swear we knew from step one. This is all part of the learning process and the reason why working on a team is so crucial. Though we leave here today with our MD, that doesn't mean we automatically know everything we will ever know. And in this way, failures, lapses of knowledge are to be expected. The danger in these everyday failures, I think, is thinking that it's only happening to you. For me, I find comfort in knowing that if this talented group of individuals before me can sometimes slip up, it was bound to happen to me too. And now please allow me one last failure as I break the promise that I made to you earlier. As we leave behind the regimentation of school and multiple choice questions, and we embark on the moral and ethical gray areas of real life, real medical practice, failures, big and small, will become our new normal. And as we deal with this reckoning, the fact that we will continue to fail multiple times a day, every day, I hope the reaction to these failures is not the one that we've come to expect. Guilt, shame, embarrassment. Rather, I hope that we can embrace these setbacks for what they are, learn from them, and get ready to do better the next time. So I'd like to leave you with a valediction that I hope is truly unprecedented. Congratulations, class of 2021, the greatest group of failures I've ever known. Thank you. Thank you, Carlo. Our PhD student speaker, Samantha Shelton, was elected by her classmates to represent her PhD class. Samantha, a California native, received her BA in psychology and BS in cellular and molecular biology from Humboldt State University. At Boston University, she studied the effects of Zika virus infection in neuro precursor cells and microcephaly in models of direct brain infection. After graduation, Samantha will become a virology scientist at Pure Tech Health where she will work to create novel delivery systems for gene therapies in the brain, gut, and immune system. Samantha? Thank you. I want to start off by thanking each and every graduate for being brave, hardworking, and empowered to make the world a better place. The hard work poured into understanding science and medicine benefits not only our respective fields, but also makes a positive impact on society at large. Over these past few years of studying and completing milestones, we've learned about ourselves, each other, and how to work together to find solutions to shared problems. I know when I started graduate school, I thought there was no problem that an extra cup of coffee couldn't solve. 2020 proved that wrong. What it did teach us was that we can work together to do amazing things. We learned to be brave in the face of a global pandemic riddled with uncertainty. We learned to be brave enough to introspect honestly and ask ourselves difficult questions. And we learned to be brave enough to have uncomfortable conversations with other people where we stand up for ourselves, stand up for others, and stand up for what is right, equality. Not knowing if we would be able to continue our work in person, what the future might hold, or how long the pandemic would last, also gave us experience being brave in the face of the unknown. I want each of us to hold on to that courage that we've been building as we move forward into our next steps. We have to continue to be brave enough to push the boundaries in science and medicine, try new things that have never been done before, and be brave enough to fight for a future that is equitable for everyone, no matter how uncomfortable those conversations may be. 
Our education has taught us so much, and it is such a privilege to be here today. Over these past few years, we've gained the confidence we need to know that we can do hard things, even when it's scary, even when things don't go as planned, and when the only thing that remains consistent is that we know that we can rely on ourselves to get through it. It's such a privilege to have gained this confidence, this knowledge about ourselves and our abilities, and to have had the opportunity to be vulnerable to great failures and amazing accomplishments. So let's use our newfound confidence, knowledge, and privilege to make the world a better place than how we found it. Thank you. Thank you, Samantha. Our graduating class selects their graduation speaker, and this year they invited Dr. Sadiqa Kendi. Dr. Kendi is an Associate Professor of Pediatrics and the Division Chief of Pediatric Emergency Medicine at BU and Boston Medical Center. She's a 2006 AOA graduate of Yale School of Medicine. She completed her pediatric residency at Albert Einstein's Montefiore Medical Center in their social pediatrics program where she served as pediatric chief resident. She then completed a pediatric emergency medicine fellowship at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. She is an expert in pediatric injury prevention with a focus on health equity. Dr. Kendi currently serves on the American Academy of Pediatrics Executive Committee for the Council on Injury, Violence, and Poison Prevention which develops recommendations and policies for reducing childhood injuries nationwide. She is a Bloomberg American Health Initiative Fellow at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Dr. Kendi. Good afternoon to all the esteemed leaders, faculty, staff, and students of the Boston University School of Medicine. I am so excited to be here celebrating this day with you. I am especially excited given this past year we have all had. If I had to identify a theme for this year, your last year of medical school, I would identify discomfort. There was the discomfort of the COVID-19 pandemic and over 3 million deaths worldwide and counting. The discomfort of seeing LGBTQ rights challenged. The discomfort of watching a knee on the neck of another human for nine minutes and 29 seconds the discomfort of seeing children immigrating with their families separated and treated inhumanely, the discomfort of the unknown. How do we keep ourselves safe in the pandemic? How do we identify racism and ensure equity? How do we continue to learn and support the healthcare system during a global pandemic? How do we keep our families and friends safe? Class of 2021, this year you had to lean in to discomfort. The year I started my first attending job, I had big plans. I got married at the end of my fellowship. We moved to Providence, got our first house together, a big house for lots of kids we planned on having. I was just figuring out how I wanted my career to look. And one day, as I was getting ready for a shift, I felt a lump. I got it checked after some encouragement from my partner. Fast forward through an ultrasound, biopsy, and MRI, and I had invasive breast cancer and needed to go through months of treatment. There was the physical discomfort of biopsies and surgeries, emotional discomfort of waiting for results and not feeling like I was in control, the discomfort of family and friends who feared for me. There was the discomfort of having no idea how to be a patient despite my 12 years of medical training. But I had to learn, I had to lean in, I had to accept that for that time, I would not be able to work in the job that I loved so much and had trained 12 years to do. I had to focus on healing. I had to let my medical team take care of me. And while I had to advocate for myself, I also had to remember that I was not my own doctor, nor should I have been. I had to lean in to the discomfort of cancer, the fear of pain, the fear of the unknown, so that I could survive and thrive and be here to talk to you today. 
Despite that being a challenging time in my life, it taught me a few incredibly valuable lessons very early in my career that I'd like to share with you. The first lesson I'd like to share is through discomfort comes growth. There are times, many times, in which you as a physician will have to inflict pain and discomfort in order to properly diagnose someone or to help their body heal. I think this is something we sometimes take for granted as medical providers. We inflict the discomfort for a larger purpose, and while we may try to minimize it through pain control with analgesics, through the use of sedatives and anesthesia, there is no way to avoid some discomfort. This is the metaphor for many aspects of our lives that I think is an important lesson. The lesson that for healing, for progress, for growth, you cannot avoid discomfort. And in fact, you have to lean in and embrace it. Many of you are going on to residency, which is a time I still remember so clearly. Residency is a challenging but amazing time. There are many long days that blend into long nights. There's a steep learning curve, not just the medicine, but also the process, how to function as an intern, as a senior resident. Learning the hierarchical nature of medicine while not allowing it to demean you or measure your worth by it. Learning how to find your joy and do the things that are important to you during such a busy time in which often your time does not feel like your own. But it is possible and you have to do the work and you have to lean in to find that joy. Embracing your values during a time in which they may be challenged by the demands of your training. There's discomfort in each of these and more, but through that discomfort comes amazing growth, just as through the discomfort of surgery comes healing. The second lesson is this, choose to lean into that discomfort even when growth is not guaranteed. I told you the story of my cancer journey and the fact that I had to learn how to be a patient and go through uncomfortable physical and emotional challenges to heal. What's important is that I had to make the choice to change and to endure the discomfort without any guarantee for healing. That's the thing about leaning into discomfort. Sometimes you have to lean in without actually knowing what the outcome will be. You have to lean into the discomfort for the possibility of something better, for the possibility of success, for the possibility of a breakthrough. That vulnerability of not knowing, that possibility of what could be, is what makes leaning into discomfort so important. You will find that there will be times during the next steps of your training and career in which you make the choice to lean into that discomfort and you fall, metaphorically of course, but that's the risk you have to be willing to take and it's worth it. And for the third and last lesson, I will start with a quote from someone whose work has been instrumental in my life, Dr. Brene Brown. We can choose courage or we can choose comfort, but we can't have both, not at the same time. End quote. When we lean into that discomfort to try to learn from it, to help us to do better, to be better, we are choosing courage. And I think it's important to remember that in that moment, it may not feel good because discomfort is just that, it's uncomfortable, but it's short-lived discomfort for long-term growth. In each patient encounter, in your research, in your advocacy, in your family, in life, and in society, you will encounter this choice many times. Do you stay comfortable in the moment and lose the opportunity? Or do you lean in and choose courage? I encourage you to lean in and make the choice to grow. It's okay to cry. It's okay to struggle. It's okay to misstep. And you will. That's part of the next step of your training and that's part of life. But don't stop there. Push yourself to learn from it. Push yourself to be better because of it. Lean in to be anti-racist in your actions, in the hospital and outside of it. Lean in to be courageous in doing what's right even when no one else will. Lean in to do the work to understand the experience and perspective of your patients, even when it's hard and you're tired and you have five other things to do on your list. Out of that discomfort comes growth. Out of that discomfort comes important change. Out of that discomfort comes a better you, a better human, a better doctor, a better society. 
I will leave you with another quote from Dr. Brown. It's not fear that gets in the way of daring leadership. It's armor. When things get tough, do we lean in to vulnerability and get curious? Or do we self-protect in ways that move us away from our values? End quote. So class of 2021, I'm here to tell you congratulations. You are here which tells me that you were daring and you shed your armor and leaned into the discomfort of 2020 and all that it brought. I encourage you in the days, weeks, and months that come to continue to lean into the discomfort, to choose courage and embrace the growth that comes from it. Congratulations, doctors. Thank you, Dr. Kendi, for a truly inspiring address. Traditionally, we would now hood each student and then present them with their diploma. Since we cannot do this in person, please view the MD, PhD, and MD, PhD class of 2021 slideshow. I now invite Dean Stearns Kurosawa to introduce the PhD dissertations. Over the past five years, our doctoral graduates first passed their qualifying exams and then completed outstanding original research. Please enjoy this montage featuring each of our graduates' dissertations. Would our new graduate physicians please join me in reciting the Hippocratic Oath, attributed to Hippocrates. You first took this oath at your white coat ceremony when the faculty welcomed you to the study of medicine. Today at your graduation, the faculty welcome you to the practice of medicine. I do solemnly swear by whatever I hold most sacred that I will be loyal to the profession of medicine and just and generous to its members. I will lead my life and practice my art in uprightness and honor. I will do no harm. 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 Into whatever home I enter, it shall be for the good of the sick and the well to the utmost of my powers. I will hold myself aloof from wrong, from corruption, and from the tempting of others to vice. I will exercise my art solely for the cure of my patients and the prevention of disease and will give no drugs and perform no operation for a criminal purpose and far less suggest such a thing. Whatsoever I shall see or hear of the lives of men and women, which is not fitting to be spoken, I will keep inviolably secret. These things I do promise. These things I do promise. These things I do promise. In proportion as I am faithful to this oath, may happiness and good repute be ever mine. The opposite if I shall be forsworn. Thank you all for joining us today for our 2021 commencement, which is now concluded. The deans and faculty congratulate you on your many accomplishments.